We are live. Welcome back to another Critique the Community. Today we're going to be critiquing nighttime photography, but uh, not just pictures of the night sky like everyone does. Right. We tried to have a little variety in today's show, although there was a lot of landscape images. I mean, that's the standard shot. Very um, few product shots, very few indoor studio shots. I know that might have been kind of debatable. Well, that would have been lame. Yeah, but I mean, you can still do stuff at night. Yeah, I agree. There was very little of that, surprisingly. I'm excited to see which images you've picked out for the next critique. I was trying to figure out what should it be, what should it be, and then I was like, oh yeah, costumes. So for the next critique, if you have photographs of people or I suppose animals wearing costumes, just like a Halloween special? It could be. It could be cosplay. It could oh, just be like... Don't do cosplay. Well, I mean, there's there's high-end cosplay. Yeah, there is. I just, not, like, everyone knows Spider -Man. I hate cosplay. When I see that stuff in people's portfolio, it, it I'm looks just like... cheesy when it's like superheroes and stuff, but if you dressed someone up as like a king or a knight and you did it really well... You have it, an image for the featured image that I really liked. I was like, yeah. that looks awesome. Yeah. But... I don't know. I'm going to see a bunch of elves and gnomes and stuff. And be like, <laughs> Head over to fstoppers.com slash contests. You can see the image that I used as the featured image that Patrick actually likes and upload your crappy cosplay images to make Patrick mad for next week. Uh, are you ready to get into this critique? I am. We, uh, we don't have our... Before uh, you show this image, are we giving away... Two tutorials, as always? I think two tutorials, but they can just be random. They don't have to be for the highest rated image. We're still having every freaking week, man. Somebody who has taken a horrible picture gets their feelings hurt because people start rating it one star, and they're like, it's not one star. This image took a lot of thought. And then I always look at the image, and it's usually a one star. <laughs> like, I would rate it one star, and yeah. then people just... People are like, I'll never come back to F-Stoppers again. This is crazy. Yeah. So what I tried to do weeks ago was remove the incentive for people to... Uh, rate their images. Yeah, like, lower. who cares what people rate it? Lee and Patrick are just kind of randomly giving away tutorials. Okay, so, so do you want to pick two random numbers? Um, sure. One and ten. One in ten. I just, I mean, that's always easy. I, little spoiler alert, I will say that I dug kind of deep into the submissions this week. Okay. Because I tried to find You usually things. sort by highest rated. Yeah, and usually 80% then... of the images are, the, are in the highest, you know, top 20. Okay. And then there's very few that are ever at the bottom. But today, I, I dug a little deeper. Okay. Maybe you'll disagree with my choices, but... Uh, we shall see. Are you ready to get to this? I am. This was the highest rated image, and you pick number one. Okay, so it gets a free tutorial. Uh, send me a private message on fstoppers.com. Let me know which tutorial you would like from fstoppers.com slash store. I'll get that sent over to you. And this one is a photograph of the night sky. Um, I, I, I don't know if I've seen this image before, Definitely but I think location. I've seen this location a few times. I think I remember seeing the homes in the foreground... I thought they were red. You see that one that's on the far right there? Yeah. It's red. I thought I remember seeing that red color on those other ones that are facing the water. Um, but they're dark in this shot, which makes me think this is a different shot. Super cool sky. Got the northern lights in there. Um, I mean, digital photography has made these types of images a lot less exciting because they're so prevalent now. Do you agree? Yeah, I mean, do you remember ever picking up the magazines, like Popular Photography, yeah. back in like 2000, 2004, yeah. when digital photography wasn't really what anything what it is like now, and you'd see images like this, and there was a real skill to it, or somehow they're taking film, and then doing this kind of compositing with Or it was film. just like the most amazing bright northern lights ever, and your crappy camera was able to shoot at ISO 800 and actually get it. But now you can shoot it with any camera. Um, this one's done really well. I like this shot, so I don't mean to be talking too much trash here, but um, I think it looks great. You looks ready right. to rate it? Uh, yeah, I think so. All right. Three, three two, two, one. one. I'm going, You're going four? I'm going four. I'm in between a three and a four. I'm going to be honest. I was a little disappointed that this was the highest rated image. Yeah. I, I don't know. I just feel like 
well, it's different now that I look at, at it on the two screens. It almost feels a little blown out on this version on our monitor here, but I don't know. Like, I just feel like all the lights in the town look kind of lame. And then there's this really blown out area way in the back. We can't zoom in quite as easy. We aren't using the here iPad today. Where what's blown out? Just I'm looking right in the back. Like there looks like some qua quarry or something. Oh, right I don't know. Here. It just looks all industrial. It doesn't look like a quaint, cool little town. Sorry. It looks like I don't know. I almost would have wanted a later night shot to be blended in, or to selectively remove some of the highlights in the town. I also wonder, and, and this is what at least I remember in my mind, that down here along this water line, I thought this was all brighter and I thought I liked it better. Whereas right now it's so dark and the sides of these buildings are so dark. Um, See, I kind of like the blues and the greens in the snow down there. I don't know if that's natural. Interesting, yeah. Or if they've, you know, colored that to make it feel like it matches the sky. But I almost want to see the whole town in that wash where maybe you shot something at two in the morning after everyone went to bed and the lights are off. Hmm. And you kind of have I a... I see what you're saying. I, I worry, though, that it would be really hard to tell what that was down there without those street lights. And the street lights are going to be on all night. All right, I think we've talked enough. Well, to... this is... Man, I can't pronounce this name. It's got all of the little letters with the little asterisks and symbols on the top of it. Uh, Tajez? Yeah, Tajez. Zlatic? Yeah, Tajez is Zlatic. I know I'm very, very close with He's that. He's my but, favorite. Uh, the forecast was great for the Aurora, but not so great for the weather. The sky was filled with clouds. I was wondering... I was wandering around for two hours and then wound up picking the spot several times. Gusts were so strong that I moved, uh, that I was moved for a half a meter on the icy bridge with my tripod in my hand. So he was actually getting blown away. The clouds then separated and the sky was just glowing above. This was shot on a RX tripod. I don't know what that brand is. Um, 5D Mark IV Irix lens. Man, he's using all the stuff that I'm not... I've, I've, have you heard of Irix lenses? I don't think so. 15 millimeter, 2.5. To get a bit more detail, there's three exposures taken, and they were all blended together. So he did, he could have toned down. You just don't like these lights right here. You think they're a little yeah, bit... the middle of the city, and like even the one on the right. I don't know. It just looks like a. It almost looks like a pop of flash. Yeah, I see what you're saying. All right, next up. So this image was the second highest rated image. Okay. And you, as the curator, did you choose a variety of images that aren't pictures of landscapes at night outside? Yeah. Okay. I, I went through a lot of these and I, I, wasn't, I wasn't that impressed. <sighs> I mean, there was a lot of themes of the same stuff, and I didn't want to pick... Like, there was some really great night photography of landscapes. And I was like, I can't make this all landscapes. Yeah. So then when I resorted to which ones will I pick, I kind of defaulted to the highest rated, but... This image feels super weird. Like, is there a street lamp or a drone firing light down on this? Something about this does not feel natural. You're talking about the highlight on the top of the, yeah, the side of the tree? Yeah, it just doesn't seem possible that you could have this much light hitting the subject there, but not hitting the mountains in the background. It's like a UFO is coming down and a beam of light is hitting this tree. Um, I wonder... Well, that's interesting. As I read the comments here, do you want me? Do you think it's the moon? I'm going to guess I'm going to guess it's the a drone. Good eye. This is from another name I can't pronounce. Ignaz Koenig? Yeah, Ignaz Koenig. He's my second favorite. Well, here, you you tell me how no, it's Ignaz guess. Koenig. The picture above was taken in Switzerland on Lake How do you say W's in Swiss? Is it, am I like destroying this Wagatal? It's probably like Vagatol. Um, the two uh, fern trees were illuminated above with a drone. Yeah, baby. I know what's going on. You ready to rate this? And I'm ready. Three, two, one. 
Three stars. We agree. I, I think it's okay. I just, I think with this photographer putting this much time in, bringing the drone out, putting a light on it, just shoot anything more interesting than a tree, and I think this could be amazing. Shoot anything other than what you shot, and you are capable of making an excellent photograph. Yeah, I just, I mean, come on. Like, I don't think that's an offen offensive statement. I think the photographer could be like, all right, I get it. It's like, these trees just look like normal trees. Yeah, I'm not really a fan of the composition, the subject matter. Like, if it matter. was one really unique-looking tree... What's that crazy tree in... Uh, Wanaka? Yeah, Lake Wanaka. The tree. New Zealand, the one yeah. that everybody photographs. <clears throat> yeah, that tree looks amazing. If it was that tree, it would be great. These trees, not as great. All right, next up. Here we go. Here we go. Gosh, this looks like a freaking comic book. What is going on here? Hmm. Do you know where this is? Can you take a guess where this is? Um, I mean, obviously, I, I, I was, I was going to say China or Japan. Um, I lean towards. China, I think. Do you know what it is? It technically is China. We've been here. Hong this Kong. This is uh, Macau. I love Macau. Although when we went to Macau, this does this feel kind of run down, like you're in the bad part of the town it looking does. at the casino? It, yeah, it does. I don't recall them taking us... I mean, Macau's a weird place to begin with, right? Yeah. But I don't recall kind of a... I don't want to say this is slummier, but it's just so dense. It feels like these are the barracks where... All the workers live, and, yeah. and there's the casino, like, towering up over it. Very cool, but I don't recall, like, going through this area. Maybe, uh, I think we went there by boat and were there for such a short period. Maybe at night you just don't notice stuff like this, but really cool image. Are you, you ready, ready to ready. rate this? Yeah, I think so. Three, two, one. Wait, you go three? I, I went, went three. Four. So i feel like this looks so much like a comic book and i don't know how much funny business has been done in post to get it to look like this versus what the natural light here looks like i just feel like this this should be some sort of pop art yeah. print or something i really like it my question for you is do you like the scooter people at the bottom or not Yes, I think they make this. I go back and forth between thinking the scooter makes this to, you know what, my eye keeps going to the scooter, and that's the least interesting part Here's of this whole image. Here's why I can't give it a four, and I want to give it a four. And I don't know, we can't crop as well on the system that we have running right now. But I, I wonder if you could crop in tighter and get rid of the top of the casino and make this a more telephoto-looking oh, look shot. Look at this. Look, Look at, at Windows trying to zoom. Wow, you have so much control. And uh, it's that's that's as far as it'll go. I think like the things. What bothers me with this image is all of the cars on the left. I don't know that I love this big sign, but it yeah. does kind of give you you know it places you in a location because of the the characters. Yeah. And I want more space below the scooter, so I want the frame brought down a little bit. But because we can't do that with the framing, this is the shot they gave us. I almost feel like maybe we could zoom in more and then bring the, the crop as low as it will go so that you're cutting off the top of the building. What? You don't think? No. I feel like the top of the building is the most interesting part of the whole shot. I don't know. I mean, I can see that too. But the color grade on this, whatever they did, I can't imagine this is natural. I don't know if they're like selectively painting in different layers where they've made them blue and magenta and, yeah. and given it this feel, but this is no Alonzo. He says this is the Grand Lisboa Casino in Macau, China. Macau's about an hour boat ride from Hong Kong. I took this image while wandering the streets at night in Macau. Came across this little narrow street and saw this view. Took it at 105 millimeters, F4. Don't remember the setting since I mainly focused on capturing the image. Um, 
he's a night photographer and he does these stylized cyberpunk images. And then he has a, Super cool. a YouTube link on this picture. So if you want to see more of his images, um, you can pull up his YouTube. But this one was rated pretty low. I found this one and he has a thumbnail. I'm seeing it kind of like we see it on the screen. I was like, wait, what is that? And I opened it and I was like, man, this this should be rated higher than what than what it is, I think. Hmm. I believe, uh, I don't know if you can see the ratings. Maybe Community I... Community gives this 2. one... 2.91. 2.91. Next up. Now see, this looks like another drone shot. Let's go full screen here. You were one of the first guys to uh, light up a scene with a drone. I don't know if I was one of the first ones, but I was probably one of the first ones that attached a strobe and then tried to fire it with radio triggers from... Well, how do you think everybody else is doing it? I mean, you could put a hot light on there. Put an LED. Yeah. I think a lot of people were using drones with LEDs to light paint, but to actually fire like a hard strobe. This is really interesting. This I mean, one also is not a strobe. Wait, what? Uh, the House on the Hill, another charming abandoned property lit from above with two loom cubes attached to a Mavic 2 Pro, taken okay. with a D750 Nikkor 20mm 1.8. So this is a hot light. Which right. gives you a lot of flexibility because unlike a strobe where I was popping multiple flashes and then having to composite it, with a hot light, you could move the drone around and light up more area all in one frame. You do like a 30 if, second exposure. If you did a 30 second exposure, you could, you could light a lot more surfaces than with a flash pop. And you know how interesting it is. You know, our, our brains are just fine tuned to look at certain lighting. Like the average person wouldn't look at this like I do and go, wait a minute, this lighting doesn't make sense. The average person would look at this and go, well, that looks like a miniature house. And they wouldn't be able to explain why it looks like a miniature house. But it's the lighting uh, because... Really? What do you I mean, mean if, really? If the sun... Well, what's weird is that there's light from the left, yeah. right? But then there's light from above. Exactly. And I'm trying to imagine if this image was taken in the middle of the day... Could you have a lighting setup sort of like this where the sun's up high, but then there's some kind of fill? I mean, maybe you would never have, you'd never have the light on the left that strong. No, and then the two color temperature differences going on, and then the weird highlight on the ground. Once again, it kind of looks like a, a spaceship is coming down and the beam of light is hitting the house. Um, I just know that they wouldn't, if this was a full-size house, they would never have a uh, street lamp so high up it to create those shadows in the direction that they are it's like in my mind it's like it has to be a drone see i could i could see this also being somehow i mean not with the stars the way they are but this could be lit with the moon and then in post you've like put a vignette on to try to but again there's down. there's there's lighting from two sides on i know house. but imagine there's a city or something or some other light on the left and then and maybe that light has a color cast and then the moon is up high i mean you can get some really strange effects shooting with moonlight i'm trying to imagine it without seeing the lit left side of the house and maybe you could convince me that that's moonlight, but I don't know. I, I think it looks So this wacky. is Jack Loran, and he had a bunch of images like this. I think this was the lowest rated of the three that I saw, but I really liked this one. Um, I think what makes this image, did we rate these? No. We should probably rate it. Probably. Three, two, one. You're going two, three? Three. three. I'm not a, like, there's something about all of his images that i don't know if it's the the wide angle or the the crop it kind of just feels like boom it's dropped there right in the center mm. and i feel like there's a little bit more i would like to see done with that but when i see all three of them it kind of makes a series and i'm big fans of series if you had 20 of these images on your website and you just went through them all and you're like that's really cool yeah i wonder if i would like this more if it was a little closer and shot wide, or if that would ruin the miniature effect. 
But what I was saying is this was my favorite of the three. Okay. If you want to see the other two, you have to go to the uh, submission page to check them out. But You can always go to fstoppers.com slash contests to check out previous critiques like the one that we're doing now or the current one that's on Patrick's favorite cosplay subject matter. Next up. This one's got some... Uh, I guess what you're Hardcore saying. contrast going on here. Some funny business? There's some funny business. Faux show. When I see locations like this, I can't help but wonder if I lived in that house, would I be content with life because I have one of the most beautiful views in the world? Or would I find myself extremely bored and lonely and separated from the world, you know? Like, if this was 50 years ago before the internet, maybe the internet's not even fair because you still want to be social. And I love the city and the nightlife and everything. But 100 years ago, could I live there and be like, heck yeah, <laughs> this is the life? I don't know that I could do that now. I think I would want to visit there and then get out. Now? I mean, yeah, but, you know, maybe the biggest club in uh, the Swiss Alps is right right on the other side of this camera. I'm just saying, like, I'm paralleling two different lifestyles. I kind of feel like that here. Like, we have a beautiful view here in Puerto Rico, but I feel very detached from the rest of the world in many ways. We definitely are. Luckily, we have a Walmart to uh, keep us somewhat grounded. Luckily, yeah. yeah. Luckily. Are you ready to rate this? Yeah. Three, two, one. Three stars. I'm um, giving this a three, but like this feels so over the top to me that if I was focusing on landscape photography and that was my portfolio, I think I might suggest toning it down a little bit. And I, I wonder if it's just the, the, the sky. If you just remove the sky and put in some eerie long streaked clouds or something and maybe even crop it a little bit more so that you don't have so much sky. I love what's going on in the bottom of this frame. Again, it's it's dodged and burned a little heavy for my liking, but I think that's more interesting than there's also, the galaxy up above. Yeah, there's also a bit of issue with the color toning, you know? It's like we've got all of these rich blues and magentas in the sky that you would expect to also see in the foreground, but instead we just have these nuclear green tones in the grass. Yeah. And it just kind of looks like Photoshop. It doesn't really feel real to me. So, uh, does that guy have anything to say about this? Uh, image? Miro Menino says, like in fairy tale, at around 23 mountain... What is MT? That's not feet. It's meters. Is that how you, do some people abbreviate meters with MT? I don't know. 23 meters of altitude here in the Italian Dolomites. There is one of the largest plateaus in Europe. One 23 of the 23 meters. 2300 meters. Okay. Um, the largest plateaus in Europe. One of the most beautiful places I've ever been. The night weather forecast was promising, with clouds at a much lower altitude and clear sky. Small rivers of fog were moving through the valley. Um, the low clouds probably protected even more from light pollution, giving us a beautiful sky to see even better the Milky Way. This photo is done with my crop sensor camera using a four, 14 consecutive exposures of 15 seconds with ISO 10,000. I don't know if I'm reading this right because it's not written as English as probably in its first language. Um, they are manually aligned for quality noise reduction. I, I mean, I done. definitely don't see much noise, at least from here. So, uh, cool shot. Okay, I think what he's saying is he's taken a bunch of images at a really high ISO, and then the software was able to combine them together to reduce the noise. Huh. I don't think I've ever tried that before. But maybe we should. Next up. Have you ever gotten into, have you gone down the rabbit hole of real astrophotography? Where they put, like, the coolers on the camera and stuff to keep the sensors cold. And There's a whole different world of, yeah. like, I look at astrophotography like that previous image, but there is, there's a place you can go where you're mounting your camera on something that follows the stars, yeah. 
and you're shooting hundreds of images over hours and then they're super high grain and then your, your software is trying to pull out all of the noise and you're putting filters on the sensor itself so it's blocking like man-made light ray. It's crazy stuff. And I thought, oh, I'll try this one day. I, I had that image where I, I took a photo down here with the red lights that ruined my landscape. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And somebody was like, you can put this filter on your sensor that will block out all of the man-made lights and you can get a shot of the stars. And I was like, what? So then I go down the rabbit hole of trying to figure out what this is. And I start talking to this guy who makes that filter for the uh, for cameras. It's not as easy as just putting a filter on your camera. Like you I would have, imagine it cuts a lot of light It cuts down. like 99% of all light. And so you have to do exposures that maybe they were like an hour long exposure and that's why you need something to follow. It's a whole different world. And then you see the results and they don't always look that great. You're like, oh, I see a nebula that you wouldn't see with your naked eye. But it it's not world-class photography. It might be like world-class in the sense that very few people have photographed this and got an image of it. Yeah, but it's, it's almost not, like scientific. Yeah, it's not a beauty. Because I, I think they're shooting with lenses that are much more telephoto. Sorry for that rant, but... So you're not going to be reviewing those products anytime soon? It just required thousands of dollars. Like <laughs> you have to take your camera and get the IR sensor ripped off and then you put this other, it was just a whole <laughs> different thing. And I was like, yeah, I don't think I'm that into it. This image um, was shot with a little white border on the top and bottom. So <laughs> I can look at it like that. Well, it's not like that on the website. Really? Well, I don't know what the Windows is doing. Um, we need our Apple TV, TV back. Normally, Patrick is controlling the pictures with his iPad via Apple TV, and he can zoom in and stuff, and we don't have it at the moment. Um, this is the image I used for the thumbnail of this video. I feel like location looks pretty cool. Crazy lighting on the wand thing, whatever that is, looks cool. Woman's pose, not as cool. Looks like she's in between poses. Do you agree? Um, I don't know if I feel like she's in between poses. Like, that doesn't look like a pro model pose to me. Yeah, I don't know... Besides taking, I mean, with this type of imagery, you're not going to just take a hundred shots because they probably take a long time and you have so many sparklers. Like, there's a process to this, right? So you have to really design the pose well, I would imagine. Well, well, well okay. So what would you have well, here's her my do? Question. If you were taking this photo, what would the pose be that you would tell her to do as you took 20 or 10 or 20 Well, shots? before we answer that question, how is this even taken? I would imagine that this is taken with a long exposure towards the blue hour and then how is she holding the light? Yeah. How is she holding the light? How is her arm not showing up through the motion? Is there a second person that's like doing the lighting and she's standing really still but because of uh. the exposure the second person's hidden? Maybe. But there's so much ambient light in the background that you would think you'd see some ghosting. Maybe there's some cleanup going on where they have chosen the blue background and like composited out the shadows that you might see if somebody was running around. I don't know. Do you want to see if there's a, an explanation? Uh, this is Hank's image. He says, this photo is a tribute to Eric Parr and Kim Henry. I'm not familiar with their work. Uh, their stunning light painting photos are an inspiration to him and his wife, and so they decided to give it a try. This photo is created by illuminating a plastic tube with a flashlight and adding a sparkler for visual effect. I don't know exactly what that means. Illuminate with a plastic tube. Somebody is moving the tube around in some way. It's so frustrating when people write the descriptions and I just want a little bit more information. Make sure if you upload uh, an image uh, with a costume, if, if you've done something wacky with the lighting or the post-processing or getting the costume was really difficult or expensive, let us know. Like those are the details that people I want mean, to I mean, there's hear. a thread going on here and I'm trying to read, but I don't see where they 
speak any more specifically about about this. I mean, the fact that there's red light on her makes it seem like she's kind of lit by the effect yeah yeah i would imagine that's what's happening but how is she able to remain so still that even her fingers are sharp you would think that you know how long would it take to do that movement like five ten four seconds. to five seconds there's no way that you can remain that still for five seconds maybe you could and maybe that's why her pose is so bad the thing is we sit here as photographers and we try to figure out how this was done yeah. but i was telling you in the video we just released today on the f-stoppers channel the uh, AI and software. There is now the Boris Effect Optic software where they have a bunch of stuff like this where you can design these crazy light sweeps. This is just one filter of hundreds. And you can design this kind of stuff. I don't know if they have this light sweep within the sparkler on top of it. Like that's kind of a cool effect. But you can design something really abstract like this and then just plop it on the photo and you've lit the girl with a flashlight to have the base image, mm -hmm. and you could make this so easily without actually doing a long time lapse. But where's the art in that, Patrick? Well, I mean, the art would be conceptually wanting to make that image. I guess. We have not rated this yet. Oh, really? No. Three, two, one. I'm in between a two and a three. I'm going three. I think I'm going straight threes so far through this whole thing. Uh, How do you feel about, especially the one on the left, can I point? That little highlight sparkler drop. Do you one? like that? Or do you feel like you would prefer that to be cloned out? And Yeah. That one's kind it of... It feels a little dirtier. Like these up here feel cool. And then these over here feel kind of cool. But this one's so long. But maybe the photographer could argue that makes it more genuine. In terms of commercial value of an image like this, do you see stuff like this on TV and in subways and used in print? and, Or does this feel like something only photographers we like to do? That's a very fair point. Um, I, think, I think the most successful photographers in the world would take this technique and then do something super high end with it. So they'd shoot a product and the product would be floating and then there'd be light around it. Or they'd shoot a celebrity or some fashion model where you've got moving light. But when you just take a picture of the ge generic model doing a yeah. generic pose, it looks similar to a bunch of other images that we've seen, especially on F-stoppers, that are all good, but would some ad agency go like, we gotta hire that guy? Probably not. Yeah, I feel like the model needs to be lit in a more professional way. Like you have some, I keep thinking of uh, like an Olympic model, gymnast or something. Like they're jumping up and it's all about the effect, but it's also that gymnast is lit really well. Yeah. This just kind of feels a little too whimsical, but still pretty cool. Next up. Ooh, now we're getting real artsy here. This is the black and white style that uh, so many photographers are doing. I still have yet to really look into how to get this style of image. But uh, it does look cool. Do you want to rate it and then read about it? Oh, uh, sure. Three, two, one. This, uh... I'm in between three and a four. Maybe I should give it four. Yeah, you've won me over. I'll give this it four. Is, this is kind of like the landscapes with the, you know, the northern lights or, you know, the crazy stars and everything. In that, we see this so often. Like, this used to be really interesting 10 years ago. This black and white right. style. But it's super common now. But the subject matter, this bridge is so interesting. And I love the little city in the background and everything that I think this still holds up. Yeah, where is this? I don't recognize this bridge, but it feels like something in well, Dubai. Well, this is Kevin Plovey, and this was shot in Rotterdam, which is the Netherlands. Hmm. Um, long exposure shot, the Lee Big Stopper, which is one of those like 10-stop 
neutral density filters on a 70 to 200 millimeter lens because he was standing really far away. 20 minute exposure, ISO 10 F22, edit in Lightroom slash Photoshop. People are like, is this inspired by, and I can't even pronounce, Joel some guy. Oh yeah, Joel some guy. He's my fourth well, it's photographer. Well, T-J-I-N-T-J-E-L-A-A-R. Yeah. I have no idea who that is. Yeah, that guy. I'm just shocked that anyone can kind of find inspiration from one person because there's so many photographers now that do this on such a grand scale. But Yeah. I agree. Next up. Now, this looks familiar. Is this the same building that we photographed? I have not looked it up, but I would imagine. I think it is because the top part of this building. Yeah. Almost. This feels like you're enclosed in a square, like a courtyard, and you're completely confined, but you're not actually. You're kind of like at a dead end, and the building on the top is not as close as all of the other framing, right? So you could walk out of the top of the frame if you were looking. I don't remember that many details about this place. I'm just saying the building on the top is so tall that it sneaks in and kind of closes the square. Oh, I see. But it's more or less like a horseshoe shape. Okay. And the building on top is just so big that it helps make this effect. Gotcha. This is in uh, Hong Kong. What's going on with Hong Kong? Did China just take over Hong Kong? Is that done now? You no, know, that's one problem being in America is like all of the interesting news around the world has been shut down and all we're talking about is U.S. stuff right now. Well, and worldwide COVID everywhere, you know, but they were doing all those protests and then the COVID hit. And yeah, they had but to you stop. turn on the news and I don't see anyone talking about, are they talking about Europe? Mainstream media is not talking about any other countries. They're not talking uh, about anything. A little bit. I've, I've just heard. And we, sh we need to do another uh, coronavirus, coronavirus journal yeah, soon. Especially bef because we're The second six wave is becoming, from... dude. If it, it, Becoming is, is coming. Um, I, I was just looking at numbers of different countries. And it's unfair to look at just number of cases because there wasn't much testing in the past. But just to say this number because it's so crazy. So at the height of the deaths in France, back in March, I believe, they were maxing out at 5,000 cases per day. Two days ago, France had 50,000 cases in a single day. And if you look at the number of deaths per day in France versus the United States, they have fewer. But if you consider the population, there are like four times the amount of deaths per day as the U.S. right yeah. now. So all these European countries are going to be, be shut back down. I think we're going to. We're going to be down. shut back down. You're never getting married, man. Yeah, we may have to do another because nobody. <laughs> I mean, maybe they do because this is the channel we do the coronavirus journals on, but yeah. nobody wants to talk about that right now. Okay. But yeah, I don't know. Hong Kong was going through all those crazy protests and everything, and uh, I think that was inevitable. But. China just decided we are going to make, we're not going to give your, your, sov your you're not going to be sovereign anymore. We're going to end the date earlier. You know, maybe it was supposed to happen in like five or 10 years, but they said now is when we're going to do it. Mm. So I yeah, don't even know the I know a lot of people have left Hong Kong. Some of the, the wealthiest people that retired there have all pulled out and have, they're not calling Hong Kong home anymore. Wow. All right, let's write this. Three, two, one. I'm going three. So I, don't, I don't know. I really like this. Maybe if maybe if I haven't seen this shot a million times, maybe I'd rate it higher. But I agree with that. But I still think a lot of people haven't seen this shot. I don't know. That's a good question. Have has more have more people in the general public? Do they recognize this location more than say Kirkjafell? Like for you and I, these feel the same. It's like, how many pictures of this? But there was a couple other images that had this sort of effect. And I think they were all taken in China where you're, or Hong Kong where you're looking up. But some of them, they almost brought back too much detail to where it felt HDR and everything super flat. And I remember when Eli Licardi shot this image and did the post-production on it, he made an effort to, to explain that you really, you really want some depth to the image. Now, this one the sky is at night, so I don't know what that depth would be. 
where Elias, he had a blue hour sky. But he said you want the buildings closer to the sky to be brighter, and you want there to be fall off to where when you get deeper into this structure, it naturally gets darker. And I think they've done that really well in this image where it feels like there's a lot of texture and in, in, in shadows and contrast where some of the other images of locations like this that I saw, it's like they pulled up so many shadows to give detail everywhere that it starts to feel like overly HDR. I see it, yeah, I agree. I've definitely seen that mistake with this location. I would like to see somebody take an image like this and then take maybe computer parts and shoot them at the same perspective <laughs> and somehow mix things in. This, this reminds me of that scene in Star Wars where they're flying through yeah, yeah, yeah. the Death Star. Do something where, wow, like they've maybe one side of the, the right side of the frame is, you know, a graphics card or something interesting to where it makes you stop and kind of think like, what is this? Next up. Mmm, interesting. Lazique Lada is the photographer here. Rainy Piccadilly Circus in London shot with an old iPhone. Oh, really? I was waiting for someone opposite the big screens and noticed these awesome shadow reflections of people trying to cross the street. What's cool is that, uh, we, you know, we certainly can't tell how much resolution or what camera any of these images were shot on. So the way that we are critiquing these right now, if this was taken with a $100,000 camera, I don't think it would look any better, you know? Yeah. So that's kind of cool. I know we haven't rated this yet, but this was another image that I think kind of was rated low. But I, it caught my eye, and I thought this was... Kind of interesting. All right, I'm ready. Three, two, one. Three stars. We agree. Uh, I think I think it's kind of cool. You know, in terms of like, should it be on your portfolio? I feel like it should be on your Instagram. I feel like it could even be printed as some art print. Yeah. But on a photography website, I don't know. Like maybe under personal projects or something. I agree. I think this image has a lot of commercial use though. This image is vague enough to where this could represent a ton of stuff. Hmm. This could represent the winter holiday season. This could represent weather. This could represent, you know, there's so many things you could put a title to this image and completely change the meaning of it. But it's abstract enough to where this image could be run in so many different ways. If you put this on a stock site, I think you'd make pretty good money. This might be one of your, you know, more lucrative you say that, Images. but I always like to think that if you put stuff on stock websites, you're going to make a lot of money, but it's always like the most generic. It's like the daughter and mother smiling like that or the guy in the suit shaking another guy's hand in a suit. Like those are the boring shots that always make the most, but I, I, I could see that. I mean, this is generic. I think what I'm saying is kind of in line with what you were saying is this would do really well on your Instagram. This would really do well at stock or licensed imagery, maybe even fine art, but it's not good you're enough not, to be in your portfolio. You're not wowing clients. You're not winning clients this. over. They're not like, yeah. we need to hire this person. Yeah. Next up. And I believe, is this the last image? Have we gone through everything? This is image number 10. So this is the last image of the critique. And this is Jonah Ronnie. Jonah, you have won a free tutorial. Um, send us a message, send me a message on uh, F Stoppers. Let me know which tutorial you would like. Uh, for anyone watching, uh, you can go over to fstoppers.com slash store and check out all our photography and video tutorials. We have a big library at this point. Um, this is, Cool, but I have a little a little problem with the uh, with the moon, and I'm trying. The banding. Well, I don't know. Let's go full screen so people can see a little better. But it's just, I think I know that this image is impossible to capture. Like that moon would be blown out by a ton. It wouldn't even be close. 
to being a correct exposure. So, and, and th this is the, the fact, the, the interesting fact that someone once told me, and I'm like, oh yeah, I guess that makes sense. The exposure of the moon is the exact same as the exposure of a subject on Earth during the middle of the day. And you're like, what? No, the moon's at night. But the Earth is being lit by the sun during the day directly, and the moon is being lit by the sun directly at night. So we are being lit by the moon at night, which is a reflection of the sun off of the moon, and it looks dark on Earth. And it but loses so much strength. But the moon itself is the exact same brightness as a very light subject sitting in the middle of a field in the middle of a sunny day. The so, moon and the earth are basically the same distance from the sun. So, But the moon is much brighter. It's made of like white dust and stuff. So it's brighter. That's the than technical, the, the white dust. The white dust. So um, when you think of it like that, you realize how impossible it is to get shots of the night sky correctly exposed and a correct exposure on the moon. What is that? Do you know that old exposure rule? It's like one saying is like F8 and be there, but there's another one that's like the correct exposure for anything lit by the sun is F8. And is it like ISO 100 at 1 60th of a second? Yeah, I don't there's know. There's some rule. I don't know what those are. Is it the sunny? Are. Maybe it's even F16. It might be a stop more than what I'm saying. It might be like it probably is. F16 or something. Imagine taking this picture at F16 and then getting a sharp moon so it doesn't move. It'd be impossible. I will say, though, that the photographer has done a good job by not over uh, contrasting the moon. If they got a correct exposure of the moon, they, they shoot the moon correctly, the rest of the shot goes black, and the moon probably looks pretty cool, and you can probably see lots of detail in it. But they didn't, they didn't just plop that down in there. They made the moon washed out, which definitely makes it feel a little bit more real. Right. They don't have a curves layer that's like pulling all the detail out, and you're like, hmm, mm -hmm. that looks super fake. But I love... The exposure of this building with the lights. I love the composition with these vertical and horizontal lines. I love the detail in that sign and the color that's in the windows and in the, the lettering up there. I love the, the solid color blue of that sky. This is super cool. And when I think about it without the moon, I don't like it as much. So I'm like, the moon's definitely doing something interesting. And if the moon wasn't there, maybe I'd want to crop in a little bit. I wouldn't want as much headspace above the farine yeah. word. But are you ready to rate this? Yeah, I think so. Three, two, one. You're going between, four. I'm between a three and a four. I might be two. I, I don't know. I if mean, if there was a whole, like, I go back to always series, you know. But a complete portfolio might be the better f word for this. If you have a complete portfolio of nighttime historic buildings like this. That'd be a really cool section of your website. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I don't know if they all need moons in them or if well, That you would could be have... super lame if everyone had the moon in yeah. it. Yeah. Or, you know, it's like different phases of the moon or something. But I really like this from an architectural standpoint. I think this is, has great lines, great, like you said, color in the shadows, the blue, the, the way the sign pops. And I don't know that I'd articulate it the way you did, but now that you've said it, the, the way the moon is washed out just sitting there is really nice. Um, Jonah says this was shot, this is the least information you possibly could have had for a submission, but he did give us something. Uh, Supermoon in Montreal during 2020. So all of these elements probably were there, but like you said, they've composited the moon in to make it a correct exposure. I'm going to be really lenient right now because we already said we'll give you a tutorial, but we have been very clear that we want descriptions of the image. I don't, I don't need a freaking story about the image. I just want to know technically, like the concept, how you pulled it off, what type of post-processing, that sort of thing in the description. Well, it's also my fault for adding it in there. Yeah, but it was just so different and it was I wasn't... don't mind if people like sneak in, but for them to get the tutorial and not follow the rules, that's where, well, that's where I draw the line. Well, you just happen to pick the 10th image that's or true. this image happened to be the 10th image. That is true. 
Let's see if we've got anything. We got no super chats or anything. Anything else that you have to talk about? I need to start getting ready for pajama wrestling class. Ah, see, it's class. the sunny 16 rule. I knew it was 16 or 8. So that they're saying ISO 100, 1 one hundredth of a second, F16. I was pretty close. I said 1 one sixtieth, I think, and I was off by a stop, F8 versus F16. So if I shot film, I would have not gotten any. I would have been overblown, blown mm. out. No, I don't really have anything to say because I've got to use the restroom like crazy. So I think I am ready to get out of here. Well, let's call it. Um, I do a do a coronavirus in the next uh, 48 hours, yeah. tonight or tomorrow night? I think we definitely should. Yeah, I mean, maybe we could do it tonight. I just have to uh, go choke some people first. So we'll talk about it, but in the next few nights.